How do you create a great real estate photography portfolio? Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Rick McAvoy, architectural construction and real estate photographer based in the UK. Okay, this week on my blog, a nice series of posts about real estate photography, I've been writing about portfolios. So, how do you create one? Well, to create a great real estate photography portfolio, you need to assemble a collection of images that represent your best interior and exterior photography work. The photos should be all technically correct, have great subject content and excellent composition. The photos should also show the buildings at the best. A real estate photography portfolio should, in my opinion, only contain 12 images, allowing clients to quickly decide that you are the photographer for them. Right then, that's the written bit. Um, it's just speaky stuff from now on in. So, real estate portfolio, if you think about it, it's your shop window online. It's probably the way that most clients will find you apart from you approaching them directly, which I always recommend on recommendations from word of mouth. Um, it will be used by clients who you approach. They will check your portfolio to see if your work is of a suitable standard. So this really is important if you want to make money from real estate photography, which is what my series of blog posts is all about. Okay, so what is a portfolio? A photography portfolio is a collection of your best work. It should be a carefully considered selection of photos that show a client the standard of work that you can create. All right then, so why only 12 photos? Well, I'm quite sad and I like things in a nice uniform way. And 12 is a nice number for me, which works, and I can't see any more than that, really. I used to have a website which you put them in a grid, three wide by four high, which I liked. I didn't like 3x3, three because three, that was nine, which was an odd number. 12 is a good number, and it's the one that I work to, and 12 should be enough for a client to get enough of an idea about what you're capable of producing. What should the photos show? Well, your best work and a variety of completed shoots to a high standard. So, what if you're starting out, if you've not done this before? you got to start out, because I spoke in a previous episode about how you get started in real estate photography. I mean, by photographing your own house is a starting point. Photographing other people's houses. Photographing public buildings. That's a great way of getting some work in your portfolio. Whatever you've got, get your 12 photos. You don't have to do 12, get as many photos as you want, but don't do too many. Just get the best work you can, and every time you do a job, if you've got a better photo in there than what's in your portfolio, keep on updating it until you've got a set of images that stand alone. It's gonna take time, it took me many years, but um, just gotta keep working at it. It's hard work, don't get me wrong, but it's good hard work. Now, important one, what standard of work should the photos be to? Now, it shouldn't be your best polished work that you've spent hours working on in Photoshop, doing all sorts of fancy things with masks and layers and all of that. Do you know why? Clients are gonna look at them and think, yeah, that's what I want. What you have gotta do with your portfolios is give the best work that you can but the best standard that you can deliver on a commercial basis to clients day in, day out, okay? If a client expects portfolio stunning work and they don't get it, they might be disappointed. So um, just make that point there. Okay, so should you include commercial premises? The answer is yes. Have I? No, because the stuff I've got just didn't fit together. My 12 photos, I wanted them to be a cohesive set. Oh, by the way, I created my own real estate photography portfolio as part of the process of writing this blog post because it turns out I didn't have one, would you believe? Head, go to my website, rickmacavoyphotography.com forward slash real dash estate dash photography dash portfolio. Doesn't get any simpler than that, does it? And there you will find my new real estate photography portfolio. Now, there are no commercial buildings in it. There were some, I took them out. 
And with hindsight, looking back at it, which I always do, there are two photos that I do not like that don't fit. So when I finish recording this, I'm going to jump into Lightroom. I'm going to swap a couple of them over because it needs to be a cohesive set. If you've got a load of different types of properties, you might confuse a client. But if you can show them some great work that all sits together, it will help you. Trust me, I need to finish that off. Okay, so I do all my work in Lightroom. I only do removal of stuff in Photoshop. If you want to know the entire process of how I selected the images for my real estate portfolio, why not check out my blog, rickmacavoyphotography.com. I'm not going to go through all that here. I try and limit these videos to six minutes because it's probably enough for you listening to and looking at me. So um, I'm going to wrap it up there. But the one thing I want to say is get yourself a real estate photography portfolio if you want to earn money from real estate photography working for clients. It's an absolute must. So I hope that you found this helpful. I hope that you can now make a start on it. Check out my blog. Check out my website, rickmacavoyphotography.com. And don't forget, check out my Photography Explained podcast. Another new episode drops today. Thanks for watching. I've been Rick McAvoy. Cheers from me, Rick.